Hey guys and welcome back to Come Again TV where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button below because it does help out the channel quite a bit. Today we're continuing the month of October with Chaos Comics Halloween 2 The Blackest Eyes from April 2001. We open where part one left off. The shape has been lit on fire and fell out Tommy Doyle's upstairs window to the ground below. By the time Tommy could get to the window though, the shape was gone. As Tommy catches his breath and evaluates the scene and the damage to his office, he reloads his gun and plans to follow in Loomis's footsteps to hunt down Michael Myers and kill him once and for all. For 24 years, the Myers house has haunted Richie Castle's dreams, leading endlessly back to the nightmare of when he met the Boogeyman. We see in a flashback, Richie, the kid who caused Tommy to fall on his pumpkin that fateful Halloween, so many years ago, that Halloween afternoon, Richie didn't know he'd met the devil in disguise. But as he looked into those eyes, the blackest eyes, he knew evil had come to Haddonfield, Illinois. By the following morning, when people were dead, Richie knew that evil now called Haddonfield its home. Those 24 years haven't been kind to Richie. He never made it out on a football scholarship. His attempt to be a success in the real estate business went sour during the market bust. He lost his wife, his job, his house. Tonight, Richie's going to burn down the past. He goes into the Myers house with a can of gasoline and plans to incinerate it. But evil is there waiting for him. Former Sheriff Brackett vowed he'd never return to Haddonfield after Michael Myers slaughtered his daughter Annie and her friends 22 years ago. But he was nearby and discovered Richie covered in blood. Tommy sees Brackett leave the house carrying the body to his car. Brackett doesn't want to stir up the memories of Michael again, so he has to dispose of the body. When Tommy follows Brackett to a pumpkin patch five miles outside Haddonfield, it's revealed that Brackett is the one who killed Richie. It was a mistake. He thought it was Myers. It's here that Sheriff Brackett reveals the story of Haddonfield and what led to the curse of Thorn. Haddonfield was one of the earliest towns founded in the Midwest. The name is derived from Hayden, meaning cursed. The devout Protestants who escaped religious persecution in England weren't the only ones. Some of those contemporaries of the infamous Cotton Mather were behind their pious pilgrim faces, actually worshippers of a far older religion, Druids. During the New England witch hunts, a group of clandestine Druids, led by one Murphy Myers, headed west, fearing for their lives. Myers was the direct descendant of a cursed bloodline. The curse of Sam Hain was placed upon the Myers descendants nearly 2,000 years ago. Every generation of Myers was cursed. While the women folk were touched with visions and sometimes the ability to read minds, the firstborn male of each generation carried the seed of Sam Hain's evil. In order to appease the gods, the Druid priests held fire rituals. Prisoners of war, criminals, the insane were all burned alive. By observing the way they died, they believed they could see omens of the future. Michael was never meant to live. For three generations, the Myers family had been blessed with peace. None had killed. But that night, Halloween 1957, they knew the evil had returned. Stronger than ever. Audrey Myers was tortured by an agonizing three-day labor. Michael was born at 11.57 that night. He was the first of the cursed Myers offspring to be born on that day, as if the curse was waiting for a vessel to carry the ultimate evil. Michael's body may have entered the world that night, but his soul did not. He was stillborn. But that soul, that black-hearted soul, did arrive as night became day. The day of the dead. He was officially pronounced alive at 12.06 a.m. and the curse was fulfilled. Michael displayed no extraordinary effects from his dark beginnings. He even sang in the church choir with Brackett's younger brother. But the leaders were not so easily lulled into a false sense of peace. They waited, watching for the fury of Sam Hain to be released. It's revealed that Judith was Sheriff Brackett's ex-girlfriend. He, along with half the football team, knew her in the biblical sense. He dated her for a while before heading off to college. It was rumored that Mr. Myers was abusive. Brackett confirmed that yes, he was physically abusive to the children. 
perhaps even sexually abused Judith. Judith was a nympho, and there was some strange bond between her and Michael. Judith's death led to Brackett becoming a cop and eventually sheriff. It turns out, when Loomis died, Sheriff Brackett received a package containing Loomis's secret journals. It's then the two are attacked by the Druids, led by Mrs. Blankenship. Tommy Doyle has meddled enough in their affairs, and Lee Brackett should have known better than to desecrate their sacred place. But no more. The two are taken by the cult and prepared for sacrifice. In the church basement, they plan to sacrifice the two, but the minister of the church comes to odds with Miss Blankenship. The old ways no longer work. If Brackett were to go to the cops, he'd be locked up, and Doyle has a history of mental illness. Who would believe him anyway? The minister tries to save the two, but just after he unties them, the shape stabs him through the back with a butcher knife. Brackett and Tommy attempt to stop him. Brackett throws a lantern at the shape while Tommy fights him off. The lantern catches him on fire once again, but just as the shape swipes at Tommy with his knife, Tommy dodges, and the blade catches an electrical socket, electrocuting him and allowing Tommy to escape carrying a stabbed Lee Brackett. The church explodes, and Tommy is met by the druids who frame him for murder and arson, leading to his arrest. This was an interesting take on the story of Michael Myers. It built upon everything that was set up in Halloween's 1-6, through 6, expanding upon the curse and the history of Haddonfield, as well as the relationship within the Myers family. This could be the reason why during the opening scene of Halloween, when Michael's parents discover him covered in blood, holding the knife, his mother doesn't really seem a bit surprised as she just steps back and puts her hands into her coat pockets. The return of Mrs. Blankenship as the leader of the cult was a nice twist, and Tommy Doyle being framed for their crimes and Lee Brackett's death was a nice touch. We're still in the Curse of Michael Myers timeline though, but tune in next time when we connect the Curse timeline with the H2O timeline in Halloween 3, The Devil's Eyes from November 2001.